every once in a while I end up with that one company that decides they want to lay down a gauntlet. That is exactly what EcoFlow with their Delta II has decided to do here on Redneck Computer Geek. They do not want another glamping video. They do not want another suburbanite video of how many times can we charge our cell phones that God forbid we do without. They want a masculine, off-grid survival video with their EcoFlow. That's what we're doing today. We already know from other reviews that we can recharge a two amp cordless tool battery about 30 times with this EcoFlow. We also know from another review that we found on YouTube that this EcoFlow will run a 5,000 BTU diesel heater for upwards of almost 20 hours. That's pretty impressive. But I think that we should really hammer home exactly how capable this EcoFlow is. EcoFlow says that it is capable of 1,800 watts. So it should run this jackhammer rated at 1,700, right? We're going to find out. All right, one nice feature about this EcoFlow I do like is that all you do is just tap the button. There's no holding down, there's no counting, there's no bop in the head. It just turns on. Cool. Let's see if we can impact something. Okay, I'm not going to make you listen to 30 seconds worth of ear-killing noise. But basically, I ran this for 5 minutes, and we're going to find out at the end of this that we hit 91% after that 5 minutes. That basically equates to about a half an hour solid worth of runtime easily, plus or minus a little more. There we go. Ah, this little bugger works pretty good. I'll make sure I post a link for this. I'm impressed. Speaking of which, obviously there'll be a link for this unit, along with the solar panel that they sent me to go with it, in the description below. We got our solar panel set out right here. That goes through and goes through the hole there in order to charge the unit in the corner of the house. Yes, that is black painted soda cans. That's my solar heater. Don't knock it. In January, it puts out 110 degrees at noontime. Now, these panels are not set up perfectly here in the state of Maine. They really should be at about 40 degrees. So I'm going to make them a spot that sits out so that they're in from the falling ice and snow, but yet at a slightly better angle for later. I know that longtime followers are going to point out that I have several different battery powered saws available to me. So why would I say my emergency saw is a corded saw? The reason being is because battery powered saws usually don't like 10 degrees or less, which we end up with up here in Maine. So my emergency saw, I run off of a power inverter in my good old Ranger pickup truck here so that I have heat that I can get into in order to get out of the wind chill, and that I have constant battery power. I do not have to worry about whether that battery is going to die in the middle of cutting something dangerous or something like that. Now, this EcoFlow actually meets that requirement because the EcoFlow is capable of charging off of my pickup truck while running the inverter function at the same time. So I could stick it in my passenger seat here, run the extension cord out of the window, and I could be able to go and have the EcoFlow do the exact same thing that I'm currently doing with an underhood inverter. So bonus to EcoFlow, I like that fact. 
So one minor inconvenience of this EcoFlow, but at the same time I understand why it is it's part of it, is that it will shut itself off if you're not using it for about an hour or so. Which means that if you had it on something like an emergency well pump and the well pump stopped for a little bit, you'd have to physically go down and restart the well pump. Now, it is what it is. Everything's got its quirks. I'd say that's this one's. Now this twisted up sumac here needs to go away. So we're going to take it off here. Cut up a few trees. It's a pretty good use for the little EcoFlow. I like this thing. Here we go. We got what we're going to do for now cut up. And granted, sumac is not exactly a tough wood to cut by any means. So if you were cutting something like maples or something like that, I bet it probably would bog down a little bit. But we started at 92% and we are at 86 right now after what we did. So let's see, 92 minus 86, 6% in order to do that much work with an 8 amp corded chainsaw. Now the reason why I grabbed this saw and why I'm using it is because I know from past experience that this thing kills these little booster packs and stuff like that, these standalone power stations. Um, I've had three of them, I believe at this point, and this saw managed to go and kill the other three while I was attempting to use them in the cold. So yet again, we're at 28 degrees. This is not a happy temperature for the battery pack to be working in. So we got plenty of cleanup to do around the pond during this winter. So it'll be great because as you can see, I'm nowhere near the truck. And we'll go cut some more stuff up. Now obviously we're just running it through its paces in order to go and see how long it really would be able to do some stuff on a charge. But while we're talking about charges, let's talk about this. So it does have a breaker in the back and I have pushed this thing as you guys saw earlier and never once popped the breaker. It does have a 110, plug it in and charge it. It also has a solar panel kit that you can get in order to be able to charge it up by solar. Now, let's not waste time spouting out the solar charge numbers that come in from a manufacturer because those are perfect world scenario. But here in Maine, it is the end of November, about to be December. We only get about eight decent hours worth of charging. And I have managed to kill the battery and recharge this thing going on four times now. It takes about seven to eight days to fully charge the battery. In order to be able to do this video today, I actually finalized the charge by using a 110 plug overnight last night. So this will recharge overnight on a 110. So let's say you are one of those glampy people and you have a friend in the area, you can go visit them, you can charge it at their house and then take it back. Or you stop at a motel in between your camping trips or something. You could plug this in overnight at the motel and be able to recharge it. On solar though, real world, 
it takes like eight days to fully recharge. At least here in Maine during November, December time. Let's finish out the video with every construction job site out there, two power tools that are really hard on generators. Circular saws and 7.5 amp grinders. So circular saws are just plain brute force and ignorance. They have no soft start whatsoever. And that's the reason why they tend to bog and kill generators. Grinders are very much so the same way. So if you're cutting off pieces of regular standard conduit like this one, they're instantaneous power draw. Or if you're cutting off a piece of rebar like this. I am very, very impressed with this EcoFlow Delta II. I do think that for its price point, that it is priced correctly. Is it really expensive? Yes. If I had the money extra to buy one because I was going to be building off-grid and I didn't want to hear a generator, and I was, say, going to work like, you know, four or five hour shifts, not like an entire day, and I could do a lot with corded batteries and stuff, it would be perfect. It is the perfect little box for those higher end power tool needs that you just can't really do with cordless items. Thanks for supporting the channel. Thank you for EcoFlow for sending me this Delta to go and hammer on. We appreciate all of you. Have a good day.